Okay, here's another fun one using the flux rule. The statement reads, a square loop of wire, side A, lies on a table and it is a distance S from a very long straight wire, which carries current I, as shown in the diagram. All right, let's go check it out. We have a square loop, both side lengths A, is separated by distance S, running uh, parallel to a wire with current carrying I. All right, um, so for part A, find the flux of B through the loop. Okay, that should be pretty quick and easy. We like the geometry. B, if someone now pulls the loop directly away from the wire at speed V, what EMF is generated? In what direction does the current flow? That's going to be fun. And C, what if the loop is pulled to the right at speed V? All right. So we're going to add some conceptual ending points, but let's get through the math. For part A, the field along the wire, well, we found that from Ampere's law. That's just B equal mu naught I over 2 pi S in the phi hat direction. All right. So then if we take the uh, closed, uh, excuse me, if we take the flux integral of that, which is B dot DA, we see that we go from the closest point to the loop is S away. And then to the top of the loop is S plus A away. Horizontally, we just have a starting point at zero, right? Because it doesn't matter. The field is not in that region. Um, well, it is, but the length of the side length is A. Okay, so we go from zero to A. With that, we still have to plug in the field, and DZ goes horizontal, so that's why we do that. But anyways, we know that DA was going to end up being something to do with A squared because the box has a length of A. Oh, it's a square box, so we know we have some kind of A squared going on there. All right, so we simplify this through. Uh, we have a reciprocal relation, which means we get a natural log. So the flux is equal to mu naught I A over 2 pi ln of S plus A over S. All right, here's the thing with the next part. Pulling away from the wire... That directly increases the distance s. So ds dt is equal to v here. Okay, why does that matter? Well, for the flux rule, the EMF is a uh, negative derivative with respect to time of the flux. So since mu naught i8 over 2 pi is all a constant, we just push it out front. Now we just have d by dt of ln s plus a over uh, s. But we know that we could use log rules to just write that as ln of s plus a minus ln of s. All right, fair enough. Now let's take the derivative. We get 1 over s plus a times with the chain rule ds dt, and then minus 1 over s times chain rule again ds dt. The a is a constant, so it doesn't matter. And then uh, we know that since ds dt is now the velocity, because we're changing the uh, displacement with respect to time, we can factor that out. Then, of course, we just uh, make common denominator for the fractions to simplify. The S is canceled, but that negative sign still gets attributed to the A. And we see that the negative signs cancel. And we're left with mu naught uh, I A squared, which we already expected because the loop had an area of A squared, V over 2 pi S times S plus A. So, okay, this is intuitively making some sense. All right. So let's see how this field is affecting it. So where the loop is, the field points out of the page. Use the right-hand rule. If the current's flowing to the right, put your thumb in the direction and curl your fingers over. So you see that the field is pointing out of the page for everywhere in the loop. Clearly, since it is radially dependent, right, this means that the further away I am, the weaker the field is. Okay, so on the top side of the loop, I am much... Uh, much less strength there than what I have close to the uh, wire, current carrying wire at the beginning of the loop. Okay, so on the side that I'm S away versus the side that I'm S plus A away, although the field is making the current go in the same direction, because I'm weaker up top, the current's going to flow to the right, uh, and it's going to push, it's going to flow to the right on the bottom, and it's going to push all the way up through the stream. So that means that we're going to have a resulting counterclockwise um, current flow. So make sure to understand that the field strength does matter and use the geometry to let you know the direction that we're flowing. And then for part C, if we're moving to the right, well, if we're moving to the right, then we're not changing the flux, right? Because the cylinder or the line goes 
where we're moving, we're not moving away from the line. So the field is doing the same thing over and over in every spot, every snapshot that we have. So the EMF is not going to change because the EMF is constant and it's, or the flux is constant. So with that, uh, if we take the derivative with respect to time, you just get zero. Pretty cool. But geometry does matter.